Hey everybody, it's me, little Frenchie, and today we're gonna do the honeybee. Um, I have a miniature painting like this at my desk, and I get lots of compliments on it. People love the honeybee, and um, I even had a customer come to my desk and say that he would love for me to tattoo this on him. I'm not into doing tattoos on people yet, um, but it's quite a compliment to say that somebody wants a piece of your art forever on their body. Here is the supply list. Once again, my favorite brushes, the two that you will need mostly when I do my tutorials, a round number four and a round number eight. These are the two that you're gonna need. Um, they're my favorite, I use them almost exclusively. Um, I've done other people's tutorials and used other paint brushes, but these really get the results I want. And honestly, when I'm doing my watercolor, I wanna have the least amount of supplies to get the results I want. And so I'm hoping that I can do that for you. Next are the colors. I'm only using four colors for this painting. And I am doing two yellows just because I'm doing a cool yellow and a warm yellow. We've got the Hansa Yellow Medium and the new Gamboge. Of course, I'm doing the French Ultramarine, which is kind of hard to see because I use it a lot. But this is the other color I use. And this, I probably can't even say this because I already have problems saying normal words. Um, but it's the burnt orange and these will be in my list down below. You can see what the supply list is. Of course, I got four by sixes that I'm going to be using. I find these are the best size to use. You can, if you watch my other video, you can get four to a sheet and these are great for cards and gifts and they're just easy. You can use them as um, postcards, whatever you'd like. You also need water, a container to put your water in on both sides, one for clean, one for um, cleaning your cleaning your um, wa your brushes as you go along, and you'll need your palette. So I already have my colors on my palette here. As you can see, it's kind of crazy. I'll clean it up to show you how I mix the colors. And I just want to say that I love insects, and I'm hoping that with this tutorial that you will learn how to do a honeybee. So stay tuned, and I'm about to set up so you can watch me paint. All right, I'm back to show you how to do this honeybee. And I'm going to show you how I drew it. I first did kind of an almond shape for his head. So we're gonna draw the almond shape first. And then we're gonna kind of do a, a pear shape, right, for his main part of his body. Um, all you science geeks out there might be able to tell me what is called the abdomen or something like that. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to draw the shapes that I see. And then we're going to also draw his, the back side of him. Now, I when I look at the photos of honeybees, I don't really count how many stripes they have. And actually, when I did do my honeybee, um, it's probably not perfect, but this is, you know, my interpretation of a bee, and this is what I feel looks good, and once again, this is nature, that's the best thing about nature, is when you're working with nature, it can have little irregularities in it. So I'm going in and just lightly sketching out his, his limbs, so we know where to put them later on. Now he's an insect, so you have six. But honestly, if you look in my photo, I only have five. Using that rule of odd numbers, um, <laughs> I'm missing one because it's on the other side of his body. Now you can put the wings however you like. I'm having this bee fly in the air. And then I'm gonna put in his antennas or antennae want them to cross and I'm gonna put in his eye which is like a smaller almond shape in there now I'm gonna put a little reflective in there in there so you can see and this is my base shape this is what I'm gonna work on to paint this honeybee now I don't know if you know this but honeyboo honeybees are very important to humans They've been important all the way back to ancient times. They found honey in ancient Egyptian pyramids. They've been important to us for a very long time. And the bees are having a problem right now. 
So I'm going to go in and take my Hansa Yellow and I'm just going to go over this bee's whole body with this yellow. I'm just going to have this be my background and for the bee's body, not his background, but his base color. And I like the bright yellow because it's going to show through now. Remember that when you are doing watercolor, that you start from light to dark, unlike oils. Um, I'm going to leave that one little spot right there. I'm going to leave that perfectly white. They do have um, stuff that you can put on your watercolor. It's kind of almost like a rubber cement. I forget what it's called, but you can put it on there. And it works pretty well, and you can just paint over it, but you have to wait for it to dry. And honestly, I don't feel like making you wait while we paint this. I'm also going to go in. I'm, I'm using my number eight brush right now. I'm going to go in and take my my number four and get it wet and go on to the Hansa Yellow and just go over his limbs a little bit to give it that, that background color because when bees go from flower to flower or you know get their pollen it kind of covers their um, legs and to have that after we put in if you could see on this one you can kind of see the yellow right here on his um, limbs showing through I'm having this there so you can look at it while we paint but the pollen kind of sticks all over their body so when I was looking at all the different photographs of honeybees I noticed that their bodies aren't really yellow like this part right here on the painting that I did I did some of them are dark like they actually show in, in real life but I like the yellow to show through most of them have darker bodies on the top here and then it has yellow pollen but that's kind of hard, hard to show in a watercolor so I'm going to just do the base the yellow to give the illusion a lot of time with watercolor it doesn't have to be exact you just kind of go with your impression and I feel like having the brighter yellow brings a nice little pop to it. So honeybees live in colonies and they're broken down into three different types of bees. They have the queen bee who lays all the eggs and is served by the drone bees who are mostly who are males and they feed her and she lays all the eggs. And the last, the worker bees are all female, and those are the ones that we see that go from plant to plant. Those are the bees that um, we see outside. So the bee that we're painting right now is a female bee, even though a lot of people think that they're male. They're females. They talk to each other through dancing. So now I'm picking up my new gamboge, and I am just going to put it on this halfway through its body here. We're eventually going to go over the rest of it with black, but to kind of show through to give it some, what I like to say, depth. But it gives it the, the shadowing and the color that it needs to kind of show. Like the light is coming in from this side, and on the bottom, um, she's a little bit darker. I'm also going to do the same on the top part of her body. I'm going to go in here and kind of paint it. Now, if it, your yellow isn't completely wet, it's okay if it spreads out. Mine's drying, drying right now, so, um, but I can... I'm going to put a little bit more darker on the top here just for a highlight and then sometimes when you just dab 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 it gives that sort of illusion of like fur. I'm going to go in here and kind of work the head and the eye and then we're going to go over it with a a darker color in a little bit so I'm going to pick up some more of my new gamboge and we will definitely layer more colors in there and I'm gonna even put a little bit just dab it if you do little dabs it kind of looks like pollen a little bit more which is their whole job is to gather pollen and now we're gonna create a gray for her wings now I'm you can't see it over here but I'm gonna be using my um, picking up my number eight round brush I'm gonna move this over so you can see um, when the different types of blues and browns you use it will give you the different types of grays in your in your painting and so I'm gonna put some water in there into here my well and there's just a little bit left over but it's fine 
And I'm going to take my French Ultramarine, which is over here. You see it? My French Ultramarine has been used much. And put it over here. And I'm just going to keep lifting up the color and adding and adding. So we get a nice deep blue. And then I'm going to try to get as much of the excess water off my brush. And I'm going to clean it. I'm going to go through, take my my burnt orange, that brownish burnt orange color. And I'm going to take it and do the same thing with that. And then kind of put it on the side here next to the blue so I can keep picking it up without dipping the blue back into my burnt orange until I feel like I have enough. As you can see, as it's, it's kind of hard to see in the top corner, but as it starts to mix together, you start to get a black color. Now, if you feel like your black is too brown or your brown is too blue, like I'm feeling right now, it's, um, it's a pretty decent brown. We can go in here. I'm eventually gonna um, darken it up with some more blue. And then I'm gonna go and get my number four brush. Um, I'm gonna pick up some of this color and I'm just actually I'm gonna pick up some of my burnt orange and I'm gonna highlight it over here so all the way to the edge of the bottom side of her abdomen and on this side too and I'm gonna have it wrap up just a little bit and then as you're putting it on, dab, 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 like little dots to give it that illusion of the pollen on the top side of her. And then I'm going to go in and kind of do it on the bottom over here too. We'll eventually darken it up, but it's her underside. Now I'm going to pick up, I'm going to add a little bit more blue to this. And you can do whatever how you feel like you want it to look. Do you see what happens when I add a little bit more blue? It gets more black. Always make your blacks and grays. It gives it a more natural effect, especially when you're using the blacks and or the blues and the browns that are already in your painting. Um, it works really well and it makes your painting more cohesive. When you see this, this bee over here that I did today at lunch, um, you see up here, these grays. I use it with um, this the, the burnt orange and the um, the um, uh, French ultramarine blue. So I'm just going to go in here and their wings are pretty, oh that's too much paint, I'm going to lighten that up. And their wings are pretty light see-through so I'm just going to give the illusion of her wings and then I'm going to put on some of, um, you know how like butterflies and other creatures that fly, their wings are see-through, but you can kind of see, I don't know if they're called, I don't know what they're called, but they're kind of like the veiny sort of part of them. So you just leave that illusion, and then we'll highlight that a little bit later with a little bit blue, so it looks like it's reflecting the light of where she's at. Now I'm kind of waiting for this to dry, so I'm going to go in and take a little bit of my French ultramarine blue and just, now I have one of these on the side here, do you see this little side paper? And when I have these, if I get a color that's, I pick up too much color, I always like to check, especially when I'm doing lighter stuff, and I just line, 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 oh, that's that's the blue. And then you can go back and pick that up that you have left on there. I like to just mix a little bit blue here and there to kind of reflect, because their, their wings are pretty see-through and reflective. And I think that's good. Now as I'm waiting for this to uh, dry, because you don't, when I go through and give it, give her some more detail, I'm going to go in through this part here. I want to make sure it's dry before I put my uh, black on there, just because it'll spread to wherever it's wet. And so I don't want it to spread because I want it to be very defined like it is on this side. See how it's very defined and you can see where it kind of started to uh, blend a little bit and that's okay because that's what watercolor does. But I can go on here and I can play with her antenna and um, I 
See, I'm, I feel like I've messed that up. And here's, here's a good example of how to fix that. I got my paper towel, putting it on, and voila, it's gone. Look at that. Even I make mistakes, and you can correct that. <sighs> Depends on the color. Um, it usually will depend how well it lifts or not, but um, with uh, the reds I find are the hardest to lift just because of the type of um, materials that they use to make the color reds. Especially the better quality paints. When you got the cheaper paints, it's a little bit different, but I'm going to go back in here because I felt like it was too thick. The lines in very carefully it's really hard because I'm used to not having a camera right in front of my face while I'm painting and trying to paint around it as you can imagine but I want you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing as I'm going through I'm gonna go in here and give her her first and I'm gonna do you see I'm gonna check my line I'm gonna if the less water but more pigment you, know, you have on there the more it's going to be easier to get more of a defined line. And I'm going to give her her other limb. Now I kind of made her limbs kind of fuzzy, like she's wearing some sort of outfit or something, just because I think it's fun. And, you know, my B is probably not anatomically correct, but I don't care because I'm doing watercolor and I'm doing this for fun. Now you see how I put it on, it's still kind of wet. See how it spread a little bit um, to her, her limb that's um, against her body. I feel like that's okay. Um, I'm going to say it's the pollen. And as it starts to dry, I'll do another layer um, more defined on her limb here. And so it'll just look like the hair is on her legs. So I don't know if you know this, but honeybees are fabulous flyers. They can fly at the speed about 25 kilometers per hour and they beat their wings 200 times per second. So when you see somebody who gets a photograph of a honeybee um, and their wings are perfectly, um, you can see them perfectly still, that's pretty amazing because of how fast their, um, their wings move. Can you imagine 200 times a second? That's crazy. But they do have to keep their fat little bodies in the air with such little tiny wings. Now I'm going to go in here and kind of put the hairs on her legs. And I'm just going to back and forth, back and forth. And it doesn't have to be exact. Just, to, just enough to show. And I want this like a little bit longer. And the one that's more in front of the faux or painting here, I'm going to do a little bit thicker just because of that depth perception. And then while we're at it, I'm going to add just a smidgen. I feel like it's going to be too thick. And put a little bit of little extra on our wings. Get a little bit more definition. Okay. Now I'm going to, it's still kind of wet, see? So I'm going to pause this, dry it, and then I'll... Get the video back on so you can see it after it's dry. Um, you can wait for it to dry when you're doing it yourself, or you know you can let it, um, or you can get a hair dryer like I do. Usually it takes about 30 seconds. With I got a craft dryer that I used for when I was stamping, works really well, it's, or a heat gun, whatever you want to call it, but it works excellent for doing this. So I'm gonna pause this, I'm gonna dry it, and I'm gonna put in the black detail, and we're almost done. All right, I'm back and I have it dry. Only took me probably about 15 seconds, but I didn't want to ha have you have to listen to the blow dryer <laughs> that I have. So I'm gonna go in and I'm, my black that I have, I feel like it's just not quite the color I want. So I'm adding a little bit more of blue in there. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go through and I'm, do you see the lines that I drew in? Just kind of curved lines that kind of go around and curve up as they go along. Um, these help me. So as I'm working, 
that I can see where I'm going to be putting the paint later on. It's always good to do line drawings when you're painting watercolor. Some people don't like the the look of it, but I've gotten to the point that I don't care and it's fine with me. So I'm just putting in this black on each of her stripes. Now, my daughter absolutely has loved insects since she was just a little one. I never told her, you a bug. I let her enjoy nature as it was. I never put the fear in her that bees could be scary if they stung. I was frightened of bees at a very young age because of people put that fear in me. I'm adding a little bit more blue here. I'm still not I'm gonna add some more of that. I'll hold it down. So more of that burnt. I wanna get it more a deeper hue. Anyways, she loved all insects and when she was in about kindergarten we had a house full of rhododendrons and she would go play outside in the yard and see them and she would went in the house got a mason jar and decided that she was going to catch bees now I didn't know this she was just playing outside I could see her you know I don't know she was put flowers in there also this girl would catch bees and then show them to me and I was like how are you doing that without getting stung and my my little daughter who's in kindergarten once they would go into the flower like this and get all the way in there she would take the flower and grab it by the edge close it up and then put it in the jar and then they would come out of the flower and be in the jar she loved loved her insects and I had to um a lot of times get her to release them because she loves animals and wanted to keep all the bees as pets I had to remind her that they had families too but she's always been a big fan of animals and various creatures her whole life so I'm as I'm going out here I'm gonna start dabbing like I'm I'm not staying in the lines and I can hear my son talking in the background even though he's supposed to be quiet as I'm doing this video but I'm gonna go in and tap and dab like underneath his or I'm sorry her abdomen here to give her that little bit of a shadowing under there and I'm probably um, I'm gonna clean my brush and get a little bit of burnt orange and then pick some of that up See, my burnt orange here and I'm gonna tap it a little bit up so it looks like shadowing and then I'm gonna go in here and put a little bit more in here and I'm also gonna do this side and see how I'm tapping it up Now, if that was wet, it would have totally just spread everywhere and went crazy. But since I've dried it, it's not doing that. I'm going to go in. Take a little bit more of this homemade black. And I hope that as you go along that you paint this that it encourages you and helps you realize that you too can paint I remember if you don't like the way it's looking you can do it again and that's why I suggest the size that I do just because it makes things easier as you're painting and I just don't want you to wait forever for this to dry so I'm gonna go in here Use my dryer. You want to make sure it doesn't sit on here for too long because if it does, it can burn the paper. Now, my black is still kind of wet, so I'm just gonna. But do you see how my brown dried up quicker? Certain colors dry faster than others. I, 
learned that with my father when he did oils that the reds always took the longest to dry. Now I'm going in on this her backside and adding a little bit of black just to show that shadowing as I'm going through here. I'm adding some here too. So I'm going to try to I'm going to define her her legs and see them better. We got that one that was you see how I'm adding it in now after it dried a little bit more defined and almost looks like a shadow now because of what I did had the little fuzz balls on it. And I feel like she's just a Almost done. And one thing that I learned from one of the people that I um, watched her tutorials is she liked to do splatter on her paintings. And I found that I like that too. And the reason it is, I feel like this is so stark white in the background that whenever I did a painting and did the little splatters, I felt like it added something to the painting. And so what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do like a rough shape. I just tore this extra. You can do any sort of paper. Tore that. And then I'm going to go in and get my paintbrush kind of wet. Wet here. And I'm going to grab the lightest yellow. And I'm gonna get it kind of kind of soppy. Let me see if you can see this. I'm getting it, do you see how it's kind of so, really soupy? I'm gonna get it and then I'm gonna, oops, sorry, I'm gonna flick it. So it's gonna be kind of hard because I'm used to not having a camera in front of me, but kind of tap, tap your brush. And you see how it's flicking off onto the painting? Now the reason I didn't put it over. Took this. The reason I took, put the pa paper, the paper over her body, is because she's still drying, and I know you don't want to sit here and watch paint dry. Nobody wants to sit there and watch paint dry. I know I don't. So it just makes it easier. And I'm going to go in and get my new gamboge and kind of do the same thing with that color. Make it soupy. and do the same sort of tapping. I like this effect. I do this with my flowers. I do this on a lot of paintings. And it's just kind of the thing that I like to do. The closer you are to the tip, the more control you're gonna have. If you do it higher up, it's gonna splatter everywhere, the higher on the brush. So I like to do it as close as to the um, the bristles as possible and then I'm going to take a little bit of the, the burnt orange and just do a little bit of that too and it'll just look like pollen in the background because that's what she's doing she's collecting pollen all right so let's take this off and kind of see what it looks like it with off so there's my bee and I can see where her her eye here is uh the black kind of moved because of this you see <laughs> so I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit more color there and then I'm gonna a little bit more down here so go through and I'm I think she's done I I hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed doing this bee along with me, I would love you to come to my Facebook page, Little Frenchie. Um, show me what you have done. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions about this video, please leave them down below. And please give this a thumb. Hold on. Hey, thumbs up. Um, if you like this video, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. Also, if there's any suggestions of things that you want to see me paint, 
put it in the comments below or come to my Facebook page and let me know what you want to see painted. Happy painting and enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching.